first couple of days of New Year bring us also the latest release of Home Assistant. So let's dive and see what's new in a 2023.1 release. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Don't forget that as a tradition now, with each release of Home Assistant, there is also Home Assistant release party. This one will be streamed on 4th of January at 12 PDT or 29 Central European time. And before we dive into what's new, let's also look at something that was released at the end of December as a newsletter and information on the website from Home Assistant crew. It has been announced that 2023 will be the year of the voice. And this is where you can come and help. Because Home Assistant is trying to get as many languages supported as it can. If you still haven't read, read the announcement blog. It's not that long and it will give you some information around the year of the voice. But that's not where you can help. If you click on this link here, you will be directed to the GitHub repository. And this GitHub repository is a place where you can help translate the English language text or intents into your local language. This GitHub repository will be improved and some more tools will be introduced to speed some of the process. But there are a couple of ways on how you can help. First of all, if you know how to use GitHub, you can try and make a pull request. If you don't know how to use GitHub, you can use this issue of your language. Go to Issues, find the language that you want to help with, for example, Slovak language, and then paste here the translations of the code. And now let's get back to what's new. Actually, the first item that I want to mention here is aliases for voice assistants. If you didn't know, you can add aliases, or at least you could add aliases previously in the YAML files for devices. Now you can do that through the UI. And what it allows you, it allows you to name devices based on a couple of nicknames. For example, these lights here are Elgato lights, but I could also call them streaming lights or recording lights, etc. And if I add aliases to these lights and add recording and streaming as the name of the light, then I can use that same nickname or alias for these lights here to turn them on and off. Previously, this was done in YAML files. Now you can do this through the UI. If we find the device that we want to add alias to, we click on it, go to settings, advanced settings, and under aliases, we can now edit them and add aliases. For example, but we can also add multiple. For example, if you use system in a multi-language environment, here, for example, Google Assistant is talking in English, but we locally talk Croatian. I could, for example, add creation words for that, and later on, that name will be used by Home Assistant when time comes. If you have previously used alias in the YAML files, they will be visible through the UI, but they will not be merged. So I recommend that you slowly start retyping all of the aliases in your system from the YAML to the UI. There was also update to the matter, but actually there was also one emergency release of the Home Assistant 2022.12, I think, .9, to fix issues that were brought up by beta of this release here. But let's not talk about that, let's talk about new things. In the December, the new version, Android app version of Home Assistant companion app was released, and that release allows us to commission or onboard devices. Now the commissioning was also brought in as a functionality. Remember, this is still early beta, so be careful what you do. 2022.12 release or December release of Home Assistant brought us local calendars. And this release now enables us to edit events. <laughs> yes, that functionality was missing previously. But what it also allows us, it allows us to use the same create service to create events in an online Google Calendar. Also, some additional options for reoccurring events on a monthly basis were brought in. Let's dive into it. If we previously created a calendar event, we couldn't edit it. Now, if we click it, we can see and edit the event. If we want to add new event that repeats on a monthly basis, we can now select other options, like every month on the 3rd, every first Tuesday, 
etc. But let's look on how you can add calendar events to Google Calendar. I've selected one of the calendars. This is my calendar, Google Calendar. Click on Add Event and of course type in whatever you want. Just don't forget to select here the calendar that you want to save this info to. It can now be either your local calendar or the online Google Calendar. Here is the example of the event that was added to my online calendar and let's add event. We now have information that tomorrow there will be a Home Assistant release party and it should sync up with my mobile phone, online calendar, etc. Translation and automation editor improvement may not at first look like a big change and you cannot simply go and use it in your automations. Actually, you can, but only if the sensors now add additional information. Let me quickly explain what this really is. This one here is a Tado air conditioning control and it has couple of from or two states. It can be off, auto, heat cool, heat and cool, dry, fan only, unavailable or unknown. But if you bring new sensors that have some specific states, not everything can be properly imported in Home Assistant. And the second problem is translations. If the Home Assistant doesn't know that a specific state exists, they cannot work on a translation for that specific state. With introduction of these improvements, more states can be predefined or the sensors can push predefined states of themselves. So even if Home Assistant doesn't know that a specific state does exist, sensor can tell, hey listen, I can also boogie or whatever, and it will be available in the drop-down list. Let's now browse through some of the other noteworthy changes, and there are really awesome gems here. I like a couple of them, and we still haven't seen the best because I'm saving that one for the last. Shelly integration now supports Shelly Plus Wall Dimmer US, thanks to the code. And by the way, let me just clear something up because there may have been confusion. Shelly Plus devices. Those devices can be used as a Bluetooth proxies but only as a passive Bluetooth proxies. If a device requires for pairing active connections, it may not require active connection down the road. So if you have one device that is able to provide Bluetooth active connections, you can use that device to pair other Bluetooth devices. And then even Shelly, which can provide Bluetooth passive connections, can control some of them. This doesn't work for 100% of devices, but it may help you extend your network, especially since Shelly is releasing some new devices. And no, they didn't send me any of them, but a couple of them really look nice. Configuration errors of automations and scripts have now been improved, meaning that you will get more understandable errors to help you out debug and fix them. If you have Unify Protect, you can now use text entity to push message to the doorbell. Google Translate has been extended with dialect support, which is awesome. Yale Access Bluetooth now has support for battery status. And one of my favorites is the improvements to SwitchBot. It now has support for power monitoring for wall plugs, but unfortunately, I think that those wall plugs are US only, so I cannot use them. But the other one that I was really waiting for is the initial support for humidifier. A year or so ago, I recorded video on how you can add the SwitchBot humidifier to Home Assistant if you are using their API and pulling JSON files or exchanging data between the cloud. And it's still working. But now we can use the SwitchBot integration inside Home Assistant. It doesn't have all the features, bells and whistles of the JSON version so far, but it will be improved in the future. If you go to settings, integrations, you may see already this device recognized. Let me press configure. And we can now toggle the power on or off. As I said, in the future, I hope we will have a better support and also support some other functionalities such as the speed, if there is water on or not, etc. But while we are already on that topic, and this is something that is not listed here in documentation, but should be added soon. Yes, because as always, I'm recording this video on the beta version. This is beta 5 of Home Assistant 2023.1. 
it looks like SwitchBot lock support has been introduced. And SwitchBot locks can now work within Hope Assistant via the Bluetooth proxies. This is awesome news and I really do hope that Mario, who won the lock on the giveaway, will be enjoying this addition. Support for the Ecobee Smart in Haze thermostat was added. If you are using KNX, you now have option to limit the bus load. Air Visual Pro has been added, Purple Air has been added and the Reolink has been added. Actually, some would say that there was already a bit of drama during the beta with this one. It didn't go as planned, but if everything goes well, we still should have a Reolink integration inside Home Assistant. And it should work with both cameras and NVRs. And it should be local integration. I'm still using the HACS integration and I have yet to move to this one here. But the last one, which I left here, is Google Assistant SDK. A couple of years ago, I think it was 2020 or 2019, I said in my last video of that year that I will be using Google Relay. Google Relay was an add-on for Home Assistant that at the time was supported. Now, as far as I know, the author has dropped it officially and nobody has taken over the development and maintenance of it. But what it would allow you, it would allow you to use functionalities such as broadcast, use commands from Google Assistant from within Home Assistant. Yeah, that didn't work or didn't go as planned. It did work nicely, sometimes. Then I found a script, which I now use, it's called Google Resume. And I use it because my wife hates when she's listening to podcasts or something similar, and I push text-to-speech notification, and it stops that podcast and never resumes. So that's why I implemented that Google script that allows me to resume whatever was playing on the Google devices. This one here should be official replacement for the Google Relay. It will allow you to push both broadcast messages, but also to push commands. So let's see what you need to do to install it in Home Assistant. As it says, this integration allows to send text commands to Google Assistant and also broadcast messages without interrupting music or video playback. You need to configure developer credentials for Home Assistant and they're the same credentials as the ones for Nest or Google Sheets. Since I already have Google Sheets, we can skip everything to step 13 below. Let's click on Credentials, Create Credentials, or Auth Client ID. Application type is Web Application. Let's name it Home Assistant Credentials. I will add SDK so that I know what this is. In the next step, you have to copy this URL, add paste it here and click on create. You will represent it with your client ID, client secret. I will download this also as a JSON. If you didn't copy them, you can click and copy them from here. Let's also double check that Google Assistant API has been enabled. I know that it is, but let's go to library, Google Assistant API, and we can see that it has been enabled. And in Home Assistant, click on add integration, Google, Google Assistant SDK, fill in all the data, including the name, which is Google S SDK, client ID and client secret, and click on add. New window will pop up, select your account, continue, and make sure that this URL is correct. If it's correct, just click on link account. If everything was done correctly, you will see success, successfully authenticated, created configuration for Google Assistant SDK. Finish. The question is now what you can do with it. While you can use this in automation also, let me show you via the developer tools, services, how you can use it. If you want, you can send commands. And sending commands means that you order Google Assistant to do something. For example, you say, turn the living room lights on, and it would turn the living room lights on. Or you can send a broadcast message, time for lunch, to specific areas, Luca room and Zeta room. If you need example YAML code for your automations, click on go to YAML code and you can copy the code from here. And this is really awesome because it can help you with text-to-speech messages. And remember that this year will be the year of voice. So the better we get prepared now with this Google Assistant SDK integration, 
with the help of adding aliases to our devices and of course by helping the community with translation of intents to your local language, the better the year will be. Don't expect miracles in the first couple of months, but at the end of the year we hope to have a really awesome local voice assistant in Home Assistant. Developers said, unfortunately, this is very small release. I don't see anything small in this release. It was once again really, really awesome. And by the way, when we are already here, I really would like to thank everybody who has joined the YouTube channel and has become YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and for 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, you can become YouTube channel member. Or once again, go to the link down below to the merchandise store and buy something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have a